Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's the Sketch Monkey here. I'm back at Foundation Kia just outside of Denver to have a look at what I think is going to become a future icon and that is this beautiful 2023 Kia Stinger. This is the GT2 trim. You have a limited slip diff, you have adaptive suspension and blacked out features, red brake calipers as well. If you were to tell me 10 years ago that Kia would going to make a car that can do 167 miles per hour, I don't think I would believe you. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at the front end design, the side and the rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. Before we get into the design of the Kia Stinger GT2, let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech here. We have a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 connected to an eight speed automatic. The power output is 368 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds with a top speed of 167 miles per hour. With the rear wheel drive version, you also get Brembo brakes. The fuel economy sits at 21 city, 29 highway. And the price for this Stinger right here is $56,000. And with the GT2 trim, you also get torque vectoring all-wheel drive. Starting with the front end design of the Kia Stinger, I've always been a fan of this design. It has this organic flow to it. And you know, Peter Schreier came in to Kia in the 2010s or something like that. And he completely revamped what Kia is when it comes to design identity. I think the first Kia concept was in 2006 that had this tiger nose implementation. You can clearly see the tiger nose right here with this grill section out in black as well. You have these chrome pieces for the faces inside of the grill. It's just a very pretty design in the front end of the Stinger. A couple of more details that I love about the front end of the Stinger are the headlights. So look at the LEDs, the, the small LEDs that makes up the turn signals in this 2023 model. I think it's a beautiful touch and it definitely adds some modernization to the front end of the Kia. You also have the brand new logo up here. Down low, these intakes and the framing for it feels very sports car-like. And this design in general, from what Kia is doing right now with their sharp Sorentos, their sharp uh, Cardinals, they do have a couple of uh, cars, the Sportage, which has more of an organic style. And I think I prefer the more organic vibe that Kia has in some of their models. Up top, we do have some uh, graphics on the hood. These are not functional, just to add some more sporty pieces to the front end of the design. Overall, the front end of the Kia Stinger, one of the best looking Kias of all time, in my opinion. Coming around to the side view of the Kia Stinger GT2, it does have the same type of organic feel that you have in the front end. Coming around in the back, for example, in the greenhouse design right here, and I do love that we have some gunmetal trim going around the greenhouse here and not have it be in chrome also have body color door handles and these are 19 inch wheels you have 255 width in the rear and you have 225 in the front end and i do like this wheel design specifically with the gray color and the contrasting red brake calipers it's just a beautiful design a couple of lines on the stinger from the side that i really like here we have two parallel lines now usually when we have two parallel lines like we have right here going into this actual functional vent that we have in the front end it ruins the dynamics of a design. But for some reason, I think it works here to have those two parallel lines in the bottom. And as always, you know what this does, it carves out some of the volumes in the rear end and makes it feel a little bit more nimble in the side view. Now, one detail in the rear that we need to talk about on the Stinger is this reflector piece here. I'm, I've never been entirely sure if I like it or not, but over time, it kind of grew on me because what I think this does is create something truly unique for the Stinger. There is no way you can look at just this area and think that this is anything else but a Kia Stinger. What's weird though is that this chamfer that goes around it has a curve or a circle shape to it at the very end point. So it becomes thicker at the very end. One of these details that I'm not sure how they came up with this solution, but I do like that it's there because as I said, it makes the car very unique. One detail that adds some structure to this design is this very sharp shoulder line that starts right here in the corner of the headlight and going all the way back. It doesn't connect to the taillights though, but it wraps around in a pretty nice way here. And talking more about these wheels, I don't think I would switch these wheels out. They are only 19 inches, but when you have spokes like this, I think Kia is good at doing this. Audi are the masters of doing this. Having 
19, 20 inch wheels feel bigger by the design of the spokes. And I think that's what's going on here as well. Coming around to the rear view of the Kia Stinger GT2. This is a beautiful rear end. They did facelift the internal pieces of the, of the taillights from the pre-facelift version, obviously, which had this circle going around it. Right now, we just have one single LED bar at the top. And I feel it's maybe a little too short. I'm not sure if I prefer the previous pre-facelift where they had the, uh, the line going around it, like following the outline of the uh, taillight itself, or if I like this more, I'm not sure. But I do like the LED uh, indicators that we have here, similar design to what we have in the front end. Now, one detail that I never thought I would see on a Kia is down here. So let's <laughs> have a look at this massive bazooka quad tailpipes in the lower section with the diffuser in the middle on a Kia. 10 years ago, no way I would have thought Kia would do anything like this. Putting a double setup of the RS exhaust from Audis into the back end of the Kia Stinger, it looks absolutely fantastic. I think it's a good idea to do this if you want to have the sporty version just go all out and put these exhausts on here as well, looking fantastic. There's really no redesign that I want to do on the Kia Stinger. I think it's a gorgeous looking design, both from the front side and rear, but I want to know your opinion. Do you prefer this LED bar at the top or do you prefer the pre-facelift that had the LED going around it? I think that's the biggest question for me when it comes to the rear end of the Kia Stinger. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Kia Stinger GT2. It's very hot in here, so let's fire this up. I love the system check that we have in the uh, in the uh, center piece of the gauge cluster with this little display. Up here you have a 10.25 uh, inch infotainment screen. And I think it actually looks pretty good. More better integrated than a lot of other brands. It feels like it just sticks up, but it does have a platform to stand on, which I absolutely love of the integration when you put some effort into making it feel like a part of the rest of the interior. This is another detail that I really love about the Stinger. Look at the vents here and how easy they are to uh, control. You have three uh, vents right here in the middle. You have two on each side. So you have a lot of vents in this car, which is fantastic. Super easy to use as well. And I do like this round design that we have. It feels uh, almost vintage in a way. Down here, further down, is all the controls for the map, the navigation, and you have a favorite button here with a star, radio, media, and setup. And further down are the uh, controls for the climate control settings. And this is an area where, if you're bothered by it, this might be a piece that uh, is going to make this look a little dated maybe, but personally, I really do not care about that. As long as it has this functionality that it will have here, I'm completely fine with it. Looking under this lid here, you do have a wireless charging pad, a USB port and a 12 volt outlet. Let's close that back. I do like the silver trim that we have in the centerpiece. Pretty standard looking uh, gear selector here. Reverse camera pops up the 360 view and you have a pretty decent high resolution, surprisingly crisp uh, backup camera. And this just feels nice to hold. It's a nice looking and nice quality gear selector. You have a big parking brake button here. Drive mode selector is located right underneath it. So you can change from smart, eco, comfort, sport, or custom. So you can make your custom settings and then you use this favorite star button right here to quickly switch into your own settings. You also have auto hold and traction control on and off. Heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats, which is fantastic in this price range for both the front uh, passenger and the driver. And you have two pretty standard looking cup holders as well. Moving further back on the center console, so you have a, uh, of course, an armrest with some uh, storage in here. It's not too deep and it's not too big, but uh, it's gonna fit whatever you need. And also have this big little slot here for a couple of big pens and a few markers. Now, looking at these seats, I love this the spec for this specific uh, Stinger. It has the gray outside exterior color with this almost blood red burgundy interior. It's absolutely beautiful. In combination with the silver trim pieces that we have going around here is no chrome. Instead, it's more like satin aluminum or satin uh, gray, something like this. It looks very classy and nice in here. Talking about this gauge cluster, yes, we do have analog tachometer, analog speedometer, but you still have the, uh, the middle uh, gauge uh, being digital, so you can choose whatever you want there. If you want to have your speedometer, your ga additional gauges, your trip info, or whatever you want. And this is a setup that don't bother me at all. I've said this so many times before, when you have a nice housing for, for, for the gauge cluster, 
the analog uh, tachometer speedometer it just looks classy i have a feeling that analog gauges are going to make a comeback in more upscale models in about 10 12 years or something like that because it has those small design details to them that are physical that makes it feel like a sometimes more upscale model than just having pixels across the entire dash. Looking at this steering wheel, it looks pretty decent as well. You have the paddles in the back that has the plus and minus sign to it. They're kind of small, but they do stick out a little bit underneath these spokes. The controls on the steering wheel on the right side are for the uh, cruise control. And on the left side, you have the controls for the radio settings with the brand new Kia logo right here in the middle and some more of this uh, satin uh, metal trim at the bottom with the GT logo at the very bottom of the steering wheel. This car comes with a head-up display that shows you this, uh, the speed you're doing and the speed limit, which is probably everything you want in the head-up display. On the side here, you have the controls for the fuel cap, lane control, the dimmer for the gauge cluster, and you also have a button to open the trunk from inside. Looking at the doors, very beautiful doors with the same type of uh, trim and styling that you have on the rest of the interior, so it kind of flows well into the door panels as well. I love the perforation that we have on the speakers in combination with this red and contrasting with the silver. It's just a gorgeous door design. Last but not least, we do have a proper sized glove box in here as well. Up top, there is a sunroof, pretty standard size. I will probably keep this closed at all times. And with that said, let's jump into the back seat and let's see if I can fit behind my own driving position. Okay, so jumping into the back seat of the Kia Stinger and look at this. Plenty of room and I'm 6'1". This is my driving position. I still have plenty of leg space and headspace as well. It's interesting because this has a very coupe-like style. So I'm surprised I have this much room back here. Down here you have a couple of vents with the uh, vent control as well with a 12 volt and one single USB regular outlet down in the middle. We've talked about the exterior design and we had a look at this beautiful interior as well. So it's fired up now. Let's just put it in sport, make sure it's in sport and let's hear what this sounds like. All right, guys, setting off in the 2023 Kia Stinger GT2. And this is a proper sports hatchback. It has the proportions of a sedan, but it is, after all, a hatchback. What do we have under the hood? We have a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 with 368 horsepower which gives this car a zero to 60 time in just 4.6 seconds in a Kia. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's too bad that they're discontinuing this uh, for 2024. This is the last model year of the Stinger. I think it's a great car. It looks fantastic. You sit perfectly positioned in this car. You don't feel like you're sitting on top of the car. You feel like you're sitting inside of it. I love that. Head up display looks nice as well. It's connected to an eight speed automatic transmission. So what we're gonna do now to slow it down to first gear and let's see what this twin turbo v6 can do there it kicks in it sounds really good too this is very exciting to drive the shifts are quick as well surprisingly quick actually cornering with these adaptive gt2 suspension that we have also fantastic this is overall i think this is a great daily driver in addition to that you have the brembo brakes if you want to have it in automatic all day you can do that you have all-wheel drive for you know whatever winter conditions you're going to find yourself in i would say this is a great great daily driver car let's go You can definitely feel a bit of turbo lag, and I like that. You don't really feel that much anymore in uh, in modern cars. But this has this kicks in at around three and a half, I think four maybe. Let's find out once again, I guess. Handling is really cool. I would like to drive a a Stinger without the GT2 train without the adaptive suspension and the limited slip diff in the back and see the difference but man this goes top speed is uh, around 160 with the right summer tires 160 miles 0 to 64.6 seconds in in a kia 
pretty impressive what Kia is doing these days. Big thanks again to Foundation Kia just outside of Denver. If you're interested in buying a, a legend, an icon, this is gonna be, I think this might even hold its value since it's discontinued. It's a sedan style hatchback of Kia. This might actually hold its value really well, specifically with the GT2 trim. If you're interested in this, go and check out foundationkia.com. I'm also gonna link that down in the description. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.